Yo, we are back. I figured it all out. And it's even better than it was before. So let's... Just gonna get right back into this because so far it's working. All right. All right, we're back. So, hopefully these guys will hop in. Um, I'll start it then. I really can't believe what a flop that video was, but um, I did figure out the whole entire issue and everything should be back to normal here we're not I don't have uh, it's not controlling my PC anymore so just gonna switch right over to the Let's see here. I got to get rid of some of the stuff that I was working on. Trying to get it to work last time. Um, yeah, that should be good. Got that set up for RetroArch. That set up for RetroArch. Should be good to go here, fellas. Uh, it's still doing it. All right, so I got to figure out why the fuck. Again, it just seems like it's the menu. I don't know how to you there we go
I don't know why it's recognizing it as like a Yeah, so for some reason. It's kind of trying to read my uh, controller as if it's a. Um, yeah, it's still doing it. We'll see what happens here. So it's still recognizing that that fast forward button. I don't know why it's trying to recognize my controller. Hold on. We'll keep this rolling, but I'm going to figure this out. doing professor you mustn't hypnotize her like this she's not ready to remember the murders yet helen the clock tower murders are fascinating research material for me i must know the truth of what happened she can't take any more of this today professor i'm taking her home all right but remember one thing helen be her guardian but you are also my assistant so it might be an issue with steam is what i'm getting out of this yeah because it's doing the same fucking shit it's it's like trying to read my controller as a as a keyboard and it says that I can do this in Steam. Settings. There we go. general controller settings I don't see that hmm Yeah, I don't see that anywhere. Another thing that it says that I can do is... Yeah, I see it's still it's still doing that. I don't understand it. That's fucking crazy.
Let's see if I can't figure this out, fellas. Or whoever's in here. All right, so. Hmm. It's kind of like if I go to, I think it's called Big Picture Mode for Steam. I'm going to try it. Hopefully this fixes the problem. Settings. Go to Steam, go to settings. Yeah, this is not what I want. Let's see if exiting out of Steam does anything. That might have fixed it. It might be Steam is just trying to... Uh, let's see here. Run. I think we got this. I think we got it. Hopefully. It's looking like it. Yeah. All right. Back over here. Fucking A, man. Yeah, so Steam is apparently interfering with my gaming shit now. So that's fun. Probably looks a million times better. But yeah. What's up, KG? Or KJ? How's it going, buddy? Yeah, dude, I'm not trying to fucking ruin everybody's Sunday here with all this monotonous gaming bullshit. Um, I think, th yeah, it's fixed. So, I don't know what the hell that was all about, but apparently Steam and RetroArch do not get along at all. Yeah, I hope everybody is enjoying their Sundays. So, right back into this shit again. Professor Bart. What on earth are you doing, Professor? You mustn't hypnotize her like this. She's not ready for... remember the murders yet. Helen, the clock tower murders are fascinating research material for me. I must know the truth of what happened. Yeah. It's not using my analog anymore. I'm good with that. I just want the regular digital controller. All right. But remember one thing, Helen. You may be her guardian, but you are also my assistant. Yeah. Yes, professor. So everybody that's in here, most everybody heard what was said in the last video before everything went haywire, but I think from now on if I want to run at RetroArch, I'm just going to have to make sure that uh Steam is shut down. So this is where I find that first hint. But yeah, um, for those that heard or didn't, uh, more so for those who didn't hear, uh, I just grew up kind of playing this game on PS1 and uh, might not be everybody's cup of tea, but uh, it's a great game.
So I do not own Alone in the Dark on Dreamcast, but I know exactly what you're talking about, Keith. I mean, I don't know. I Dreamcast was uh, definitely a fucking major part of my gaming life. All right, I'm going to try to leave here now. There we go. I just want to speed this up from where it was last time. Because we had to start all over again. And um, I, I plan on beating this game. And that's why, again, for those who missed it or wasn't here the first time when I was running it, uh, I'm going to keep these deep dive videos are going to be the videos that I beat retro games or just games in general in. Um, and then the sewer streams will just be random games that I play that I invest time in, but ne might not necessarily beat them. Games like Ark, Mon Bazoo, uh, way it's looking right now, TMNT. I just have no desire to just like beat the game right now. You know what I mean? I play it like every now and then. Um, but there's some games that I really want to beat, and Clock Tower is one of those. Yeah, the new nightmare. I do remember that alone in the dark. I don't know how the sound is for you guys. Hopefully it's loud enough. But yeah, this um this game I definitely played a lot growing up. Uh again, my dad bought this shit. Uh, I would have loved to still had my copy. I almost bought this not terribly long ago. I've mentioned it before. I could have, uh, I could have hopped on a complete copy of this for like ninety bucks, and I'm sure it's probably more expensive than that now. I'm not sure what it goes for anymore, but um, and also this is. Again, for those who missed it, this is the second, truly the second game in the series. Um, the first game being on the Super Nintendo. Thanks for having faith in me and getting this shit running, though. Uh, I got a... You know, that's one new th one thing about being new to streaming kind of is I run into these problems that uh, I'm not necessarily prepared for at the time. Resident Evil 1 long box go for. I know those long box games are more, they're kind of sought after now. Um, RE1 long box. Well, there's one on eBay right now for 150 bucks, one for 174, uh, one for 80. But um, that that might not be that might be without a di oh with no manual for 80 bucks. So yeah, it depends on. Yeah, sound is good. Cool, cool shit. But yeah, um, it's funny that my dad's in here right now. Uh, we were just talking about, I was just talking about actually, uh, basically how you had bought this game kind of early on into, uh, our PS1 experience and, um, just always loved the game. Yeah, dude, I feel like, I, yeah, like I appreciate it, Keith, but I don't know. There's this weird, like. Uh, part of me that wants things to just be better and more organized and I think it's just going to come in, with time of me streaming and being more comfortable 
um, that podcast that I did about Sevedemic last night, um, you know, for the first 27 minutes, nobody could hear me because I was trying out new shit, you know, trying to uh, basically monitor my headphones so that people don't get the sound from my PC back to my mic and it's not like all echoey and shit. Uh, so, you know, I, I have some shit to like work on, but I'm constantly, uh, constantly working at it. Here we go. Made it out of the room. So we're going to talk to Harris again, and this is where the whole fucking stream went south last time, but I can promise you it's not going to happen this time. Uh, yeah, and I, dude, I appreciate that, Keith, for real, bro, because I, dude, I just appreciate people, like, wanting to come in and, uh, watch me play some of these old games or even newer games, um, I got ARC re-downloaded, so I'm, I'm gonna probably put some time into ARC on stream, um, and I just don't really, want, like, I still have to have, you know, as everybody else knows, you guys got to have your own fucking life too, you know? So I don't want my streaming to interfere with my life as much as I don't want uh, people to, you know, uh, I have like a schedule or something and, you know, fucking so-and-so feels bad that they can't make it and shit. Like, I don't want that to be the case either. And that's kind of why I leave my streams up. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because, I mean, there are times where, like, I even fumble over words just because I'm still, like, I, I, all in all, I'm sitting here talking to a, a screen. So it's kind of taken me some time to, to get the hang of things. And I, I just want my channel to be a bit more organized in a sense of, like I said, um, here we go with these guys. And this is one of the creepier parts of the game that maybe nobody talks about. I've heard it talked about in videos of it. But this Nolan guy here, this dude in the blue jacket, he ends up like kind of like trying to date. He ends up trying to date like one of the main uh, characters in the game, but she's underage. And like... It's fucking weird. I never noticed it as a kid, but as an adult noticing it, it's just very fucking odd to me. But yeah, so they're just talking about here, um, trying to connect with Jennifer, which is the, the girl that you, um, are a psychiatrist for and talking to her about the, the, um, clock tower murders or the, uh, giant scissor murders yeah this game just has some kind of charm to it dude in a sense of like i said right now it's not really you know much other than me talking to these dudes and but once you start running from scissor man this game is crazy because you don't again you don't there is drop d in here has talked about it um there's just a charm to n it's different than most horror survival games in the sense that you're not attacking. <laughs> yeah, don't feel bad, dude. Uh, I didn't even catch it the first time around. I'm sure there's not a lot of people that that caught it uh, the first time around. Um, I definitely just remember uh, loving the... Uh, because it kind of starts to dive into this family, the Barrows family, and uh, their mansion. Yeah, um, it's uh, this game is. 
And I, I noticed something about it that I didn't notice before uh, my first couple playthroughs, and I, I don't believe it's because it's an emulator. Um, the actual in-game sounds like... I love the songs that play and shit. Like when Scissor Man starts... Uh, when Scissor Man starts chasing you, the music is fucking incredible. But in the beginning, when they're showing the those you know those action sequences and the CG uh, footage in the beginning, whenever they read stuff off, like it just overlaps with one another. It just was not well fucking mixed at all. A, ger a murderer who had used a giant pair of scissors. Yeah, so Barton just wants to believe that this guy is like, it's nothing major other than just some random weirdo that's uh, kind of copycatting the, the first set of Clock Tower Murders, which would be the beginning, which was the uh, SNES version or Super Nintendo version. All right, so... We're done talking to these dudes. We have to get back to the lab, he says. He's expecting another survivor. I believe this is that kid, Edward. Yeah. Ten years old. Um... Are we on the third floor? Okay. So we're on the second floor. Yeah, and this game will not let you, like... It, it'll let you pick and make decisions for certain things, but it will not let you progress until you have pretty much scanned everything. Which could be something, you know, so small. And that's probably the reason why I didn't finish this game before, but... Alright, so I believe this is the lab here. Yeah, and this is where I get to ask Harris about taking the uh, statue. So we're going to check out the statue first. And I think we're going to have Harris take this. I definitely remember ending up at the Barrows Mansion before uh, in game. Like the the game is just crazy in the ways that it's it's different. Um, and like I said before, there's probably eight or nine endings for this game. I also own a, a copy of uh, Clock Tower Three for PS Two. That was something that I was able to, um, yeah, here we go. Yeah. The old butler at the Barrows Mansion named Rick. Yeah, we're going to have Harris. I could ask Harris to show it to him. Yeah, we're going to do that. But yeah, I don't know. Uh, a lot of these early survival horror games, you know, like... Especially Resident Evil 1. I would watch my dad play those games uh, just because I really wasn't... I was still kind of young and getting used to PS1. Um, my mind was just blown by... Oddly enough, you look back at these graphics and they definitely uh, didn't... Uh, some of them did not hold up well at all, but I still think there's a charm about these games. And I can still get into them. Yeah, so he's going to ask him on his way home. Uh, man. 
So I believe I can go in here. So Harris is going to take that. And this is where you meet Edward. Calls him Edward because he doesn't remember his name. Yeah, so he's going to start asking him here about these about what happened oh yeah I I I would agree dad um, I think for me it's not only like yeah these graphics looked advanced because we were finally moving past 2d if you had to explain to someone who wasn't there, that was a big part of it. Yeah, that's for sure. And to me, um, like my dad just said, uh, it's pretty cool to see a retro game like this. Back then, these graphics were good for the time. Absolutely. Like, you know, during that, you know, coming from Sega, Sega Genesis days and jumping right into... What's up, Scott? Coming from Sega Genesis days, because that was the first system that I really got to like spend time with my dad playing. Um, yeah, coming from Sega Genesis, and then we um, we would end up getting a PS One for Christmas, and um, PS One. Most people, even Drop D in here, would say the same thing. PS One is probably top of the you know top three of favorite game consoles of all time somewhere up in there you know what i mean so it's like these games still especially the ones that i haven't gone back and beat like they still are uh they're still super special to me in a sense of like uh, no different than music it kind of just takes you back in time um oh here we go this is jennifer She thinks she's going to go out for a while. I bet that's probably not a fucking solid idea. I bet that. All right. Yeah, the music on some of these... Even, dude, I, there's some Sega CD games out there that have fucking incredible music for them because it was all CD... Yeah, we definitely were still rocking CRTs, the standard definition. Yeah, they it these games did look great then, bro. I'm I'm definitely not gonna front there. I would just be chased by reporters. Okay, so So Jennifer is gonna go meet Edward. Yeah, that's ex you know what's fucking crazy is that Terminator game is the game that first came to my mind when thinking of Sega CD and great music on the Sega CD. Uh, but yeah, coming from you know us uh, kids playing um, uh, Sega or Sega Genesis to to the PS One, like it was a major step for me, and um, I got to. Uh, I got to rent actually um my great aunt my great aunt and uncle um I went down there to spend some time after my dad's mom passed away and uh I got to rent uh, a PS1 before I ever owned one but um even during that time like I remember staying up all night the first night I was there playing that shit and like I just loved everything about the 
the uh, PS1. And uh, so when we finally got one and were able to just see some of these games, uh, like Resident Evil 1 is still groundbreaking for me. Like the, uh, I'll never forget the first time I saw that game. All right, so we're here to meet Edward. But yeah, man, I, I just, I, I don't know. I love talking about old games like that, and I think there's still that, um, that community that could be put together of, like, just all, everybody in here that just loves retro games or what retro games did for them. Yeah, facts, Josh. Facts. They were graphics you could only get on a PC back then, and computers were super expensive. Yeah, uh, it's just mind blowing. And don't get me wrong, like, I loved uh, Nintendo 64. What up, Brick? I loved Nintendo 64 around this time as well. You know, like, I was a fan of a lot of the N64 games, but PS1 was just special to me. Same with Dreamcast. Dreamcast and PS1 are definitely up there for me. In all-time favorite systems. Shit, could do a whole fucking podcast on that. Oh, she must be going. So, she talked to Edward, got to meet him. And I think this is kind of where things start to pick up a little bit. Um, so. Huh. Municipal Library. Okay, I definitely remember this place. But yeah, man, these there's just still a charm to these old games for real. Like even going back and playing this, like it's still um it's still amazing to me that at that time we were experiencing games like this that were just super unique and knew how to tell a story even if the fucking voice acting or what even some of the writing would be trash but it was like dude people were they were just thirsty at the time you know what i'm saying and there was just a a way that games told a story back then that they don't tell now really i mean i'm I'm not saying all games but a good fucking majority of them so going back and playing shit like this sometimes is a bit refreshing yeah so we're gonna go see helen i don't know if this is where i don't know where this if this is uh Where I run into, um, yeah, dude, I, I would definitely agree with that. Like I said, um, those early moments of, uh, playing games like Resident Evil one or games like this game, uh, there was just a sense of fucking dread and shit that like, it, the games definitely like scared you like movies scared you back then. All right, we're going to talk to Helen here. She's going to be a bit late tonight and go ahead and eat without me. Her hard drive crashed and she lost all of her data. Got to get it restored tonight. Yeah, these games, uh, I don't know, man. 
I, I, I really do want to go back and beat a lot of games that I didn't get a chance to beat or, you know, uh, my dad and I talk about a lot of Sega games from time to time. Um, like I used to be Gunstar Heroes back in the day, kind of regularly with my brother, Billy. And, uh, someone is in front of the house. I have Tales of the Sun. Yeah, I have Tales of the Sun. We could definitely do that. That could be one of like, you know, one of those uh, sewer stream ones where it's kind of just uh, broken up and not so much focused on me beating the game, but just playing a game or showing a game. I think, I think that's the way. I remember a couple times being in a save room of Resident Evil and just using the time to just breathe, plot out, okay, I got on Green Herb and about 10 bullets. How am I going to do this? Yes, dude. Yes, dude. That's when games were fucking real survival horror, dude. And they have since lost that charm. There's a couple games that are trying to go back that route. Um, and I even feel some of the remakes... Or the remastered uh, games are uh, are solid. So here's Nolan hitting on. Yeah, please call me Nolan. Been collecting information on the clock tower case for a long time. Yeah, man, when you heard that fucking safe room music, it was like a breath of fresh air just to step in and, like, you knew that you weren't going to be attacked by anything. You you knew that, uh... Hey, I know. You knew that things were just all right, you know what I mean? And you could put whatever you needed away to in your uh, inventory away. It was just, I don't know, man. Different, definitely different times. I think that's why those games are still difficult to this day. And, you know, Resident Evil 1 today is still by no means an easy game. Especially if you haven't played it in a long time. He claimed it was making him stressed out. Shit, dude, that was like a zen vibe that you would get almost hearing that music. Hey. Uh-oh. Here we go. Someone seemed to be following me. All right. I don't know. Oh, that's paused. So she runs off into this like wooded area. What's wrong? Help. Someone is following me. Oh boy. Some kind of weirdo? Oh. Some kind of weirdo? Absolutely. So, first encounter with Scissor Man, and shit is about to get real. Because I have no clue. It's been so long since I played this. gonna go I'm just gonna oh no I think we just died maybe oh boy (laughs) 
Yeah, yeah, that is facts. That Judge Dread game is, I don't know. I still love that game. Still got a lot of love for that game. Um, and yeah, I don't think people realize how the easy they have it when games were just fucking hard back then, and you had to rely on or hope that games had passwords or a password system that you could use. Hopefully, I don't know what we're doing here, but see, that's why this game is going to be crazy to me because it's been such a long time since I've played it that I don't even know what, what I'm doing. There isn't anything that seems useful. Now, I do remember something about, uh, it's been a long time since I've played this, but I do remember something about a, uh, like there was a, there's like a fire escape and you can, oh boy, Jesus. Well, here we go. Yeah, that's that's crazy, dude. Uh, hopefully we don't get. I mean, I'm probably gonna die in this a lot. I'm sure. It's been a while since I played it. Um. Oh the oh this I know. Okay, so if you ask Harris to oh boy, we're done for. We're done for. Um, if you ask Harris to take the statue, then the statue is not there. But I believe if you don't, the statue is there and you can use it to attack. You can use it to hit Scissor Man. I can't go into that door. Can't go into that door. Oh, we're in big trouble. Yeah. Dead. Man. This game is fucking great, dude. Because I, I, it's been so long since I played it, and... Oh, boy. I, am I stuck here? Maybe this. Yeah. There's some like spray shit. Here he comes. Alright, so that's another escape. Kind of gives me time to uh, check out what else I have to do as well. <laughs> Man, man, this... What a great game. Yeah, there's a fire escape at the top of these stairs. And, um... I believe... You can get keys for it if I remember correct. I'm just going to try to... Uh... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was just a mild inconvenience. <laughs> and then he just leaves the room. Oh. Uh... Men's Lounge is written on the door. I remember this room. I remember you could like, in one part, somebody's sleeping in here, I believe. Ah, another hint. 
and those hints you can only see i think at the at the like yeah there's no way to see them here no one is using them you don't say bunk beds for napping Yeah. No shit. Some random bug spray and it's all she wrote. It says you changed your YouTube name and who would that be? Is it Scott? All right, so I don't believe I can use this exit. Yeah, I was gonna say, I don't remember. And this door was locked or no, this door was the men's lounge. Yeah, that's what I thought. All right. This fear. The door is locked. All right. I don't remember. I remember there's some crazy ass scenes. I know there's one downstairs. Oh boy, this is. Yeah, I was just thinking like Scissor Man could definitely be in there. This shit is crazy. And this place is all dark. Alright. I don't remember if I checked this first door here. No, I did not. Oh boy. The music again. Fuck. Um, yeah, I'm stuck here. Wow. So, I don't know what... And that's another thing. Certain things trigger Scissor Man to, like, come back. Um... I don't think there's any real significance to this room. So, this room is basically pointless. I think I'm going to have to go down to that first floor. I think I go down to the first floor and there's a room where there's a cop that has like his... His head cut off, I believe. Oh boy. Oh boy. How did I know? We're gonna try to go down to that first floor. You have to double tap X in order to make your character run. Alright, 
So, I believe it's in here. Maybe this way. Huh. Here we go. Will it work? <laughs> and you never know, dude. Oh, dead. <laughs> He's stuck. So that allowed me an escape, but I'm still in chase. Yeah, dude. And the in the sense of fear here is still like, you know, trying to get away from Scissor Man and trying to figure out what you're doing all at the same time. I don't remember anywhere else that I know that there's like a box or something. Yeah. And sometimes he'll find you in here. I think I can get something in this room too, by the way. This room looks mad familiar to me. Alright, so we escaped again. Just want to say that this shit is great being able to play this game again and um bullshit with everybody about older games like this definitely different times and definitely a different charm to games an oil can So I don't know what the oil can is used for, but this another hint, but still not putting me anywhere where, um, all right. So, she wants something that she can defend herself with, she says. I don't know what this oil can is for. I'm gonna. Yeah, so I'm I'm probably going to have to cut this one short. Not right now, but I will have to cut this short. Um, I have to uh, run an errand real quick. Um, and I didn't plan on this being a uh, major, major long stream today anyways. But I figured getting into this game would be some fun. Oh, boy. There we go. You go poking around like that, Scissor Man. Yeah, and I don't know how to get away from this and this time. I should have just went into that door, but I didn't. try to hide in here I don't think it ever usually pays off but
Um, I really need to go back to that first floor. I'm going to do this before I save the game. Um, I need to go back to this first floor and check out that room without Scissor Man chasing me. Yeah, this room. So there's... I thought there was like a way to turn on this alarm or something along those lines. Yeah, here's the dead cop. There's a key on the table. Yep, the ladder key. And just for shits and giggles. Excuse me. Excuse me. Oh my god. So Scissor Man might put on chase here. Maybe not. Alright. So it says ladder key. Hopefully make it out of here before uh, I have to hop off. Um, but yeah, I definitely plan on uh, streaming more of this. I I'm going to beat this game because it's, it's never happened, so... Yeah, it's locked. All right. We're gonna, we're gonna try. Got out. I did it. Did it. We got away from that whole encounter. So we're going to save here. And it does the check and memory card shit. And I think that's where we'll leave it. Um, I will, I, I don't know, I'll probably stream, um, sometime this week. I always usually put on, um, social media when I'm going to be up. Uh, sometimes it's just random. Sometimes I just get an itch to play a game and I'm like, ah, oh, I should just stream this. So, yeah, I, um... I plan on beating this game because uh, I never have and I've made it all the way to the castle in the game uh, years and years back but um, yeah I think that's and then other times I'll just stream stuff like Mon Bazoo or Ark you know I downloaded Ark I have that saved on my uh, hard drive now and Ark is a really awesome game and I think it will make for a really awesome game to stream because crazy fucking random shit happens. Yeah, oh, you're going to see more of this, Josh. I'm going to beat this game. Um, uh, and not to mention, I'd kind of like to check out the other endings as well or figure out how to um, obtain different endings in it. Um, it's a game that I've looked into the history for because... There's just not a lot of people that talk about Clock Tower or the series in general. 
Um, so it's it's a game that I uh, that I plan on um, kind of just like I said, deep diving. Uh, I want to beat the game, and I definitely want to figure out uh, you know what ending that I'm gonna get for the first time, and it's a really fun game. So. Um, yeah, but I definitely appreciate everyone stopping in. I'm not going to leave you guys with music on the outro, um, just because I'm going to stop the stream. Um, but yeah, uh, thanks again for everyone hopping in. If you fucking stayed last night for the podcast about Sev or you didn't get to check that out, it's, um, it's on my YouTube page. Uh, I think it turned out to be really good. Uh, And uh, I'm just going to keep going. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just going to keep doing this shit. And uh, hopefully it keeps rolling this way. But yeah, thanks for sticking with me, guys. And uh, I'll catch you next time.